Officer Joseph Burns could feel the dread radiating from the small house in Dover Township, Pennsylvania. He arrived to find the door ajar and heard nothing but silence. But he knew something was wrong. The blood that ran like an omen through the narrow hallway sent a chill down his spine. He stepped slowly into the living room, gun drawn, his gaze settling on Megan Saunders' crumpled body. She lay still, her eyes closed, and her skin a pasty white like chalk beneath his feet. So much sorrow emanated from her corpse as Officer Burns thought of what must have happened here. A determined young woman seeking solace in a restraining order, only to be met with a cruel fate. There beside her lay an empty gun, the grim truth of a murder-suicide revealed. It was then that Officer Burns felt a wave of sadness wash over him. Officer Burns felt his heart clench as he thought of Megan Saunders. She had been so helpless. Had she seen it coming, or had it all happened in an instant, too fast for her to act? He shook his head, trying to erase the image of her tears and screams falling on deaf ears as Devin Elias took her life. He called out orders as more police cars filled the driveway of the small house. A sigh of relief came when they heard that Devin Elias had barricaded himself inside the garage and eventually surrendered peacefully after hours of negotiation. When Officer Burns cautiously entered the hallway, he found an envelope with a restraining order tucked inside, along with a letter addressed to Megan. It was clear that Devin had come to confront her, despite knowing that he was not allowed near her home or workplace. His last words to her before putting a gun to his own head were of love and regret. In the days ahead, of which there were many, police worked tirelessly to uncover more about what had happened. A young woman had been horrifically killed, and the person responsible? Dead, too. Officer Burns remembered all those he had seen in his long career whose lives were irrevocably changed by crime. He remembered the pain that preceded death in this small home, the pain that was now silenced forever. It was a sorrowful lesson Officer Burns took with him as he returned to the station and completed his paperwork of how tragedy can both teach and bring peace. Back at the scene, officers were meticulous in their investigation. Every corner of Megan's home closely studied, physical evidence gathered, a loose strand of hair, smeared blood on carpet or wall, fingerprints left on items, all clues helping construct a narrative of violence and grief. The detectives were aware of any incriminating phone records or emails linked to Devon prior to his deadly rampage. These could be useful in understanding his reasons for such heinous actions. Surveillance cameras in the neighborhood also proved beneficial with footage uncovering visitors to Megan's property from unknown sources, data which showed links between events preceding this shocking crime. The detectives left no stone unturned when it came to unraveling the mystery behind Megan's death. They interviewed her family, friends, and co-workers in an attempt to gain further insight into Devin's psyche, analyzing his history, relationships, and any health issues that could have contributed to this heinous crime. Unfortunately, no one had been privy to anything out of the ordinary leading up to Megan's death, not even a rippling suspicion that something might be amiss. Devin appeared to have made great efforts to carry out his sinister intentions without leaving any clues until it was too late for Megan. The thought of those terror-filled moments she must have endured before slipping away brought Officer Burns little comfort at night. This tragedy proved yet again how dangerously fragile life can be and how darkness can effortlessly prevail over the good. The black community has been suffering from a monstrous epidemic of domestic violence for a long time, and its women continue to bear the brunt of it. Despite the evidence presented by The Guardian and other outlets that black women are dying from murder, rape, discrimination, and domestic abuse at a rate of four per day, which is highly unequal. We remain silent about this issue. But sisters, you don't have to accept your fate as a hapless victim. According to data from the World Health Organization, 
30% of women worldwide experience a violence within their intimate relationships. It may appear normal from the outside, but there are always subtle signs and behaviors of abuse that could be present. To avoid falling into a perilous trap, here are some warning signs. Law enforcement suggests you watch out for. Your partner is excessively jealous and possessive. Your opinion is not considered as your partner attempts to control you. You feel scared and are apprehensive about making them angry. They have a short temper. They placed pressure on you to do things you don't want to do, like having sex or break the law. Drug alcohol abuse is present. Your partner blames all their issues on you. A history of other abusive relationships exists. Family, friends warned you about them or expressed concerns about your safety. Do not let another day go by without acting against domestic violence. You can start today, whether it's reaching out to a friend, talking with a counselor, or reporting any egregious behavior. Escape the cycle of abuse and gain control of your life. It can feel like a daunting task, but leaving an abusive relationship is necessary to keep yourself safe. You deserve to be treated with respect and love. Don't settle for anything less. Be sure to be firm when you speak to an abuser. Remind them it's not your responsibility to fix or save them. Stay as composed as possible in this circumstance, no matter how difficult that may feel. Seek help if necessary. Contact the police if physical abuse occurs and inform family and friends of the situation. If suicidal thoughts or dangerous actions arise, reach out to the U.S. National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 800-273-TALK anytime or crisis text line at 741741. If you are dealing with domestic violence, contact the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 1-800-799-7233. Stay safe, y'all. This is No Tears for Black Girls, a true crime podcast with a purpose. Don't miss out on our weekly revelations that the mainstream won't share this Thursday and every Thursday thereafter. Tune in to any podcast streaming service to hear stories you won't believe.